Thank you for stopping by Ballista Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be doing a little experiment with celery seeds and smoke rings. Let's get going. All right, although it's not critical for good tasting barbecue, everyone wants to see a smoke ring. It's just kind of like a badge of honor. It looks cool. And because of that, a lot of uh, spice companies are incorporating celery seeds into their rub. Celery seeds are high in nitrate and it's supposed to enhance the smoke ring, the developing of a smoke ring. And I have no problem with that. Um, a, I like the way smoke rings look and B, I actually enjoy the flavor of celery seeds in rubs and, and barbecue sauces. I think it's good stuff. So I've just been wanting to do this for a while. I'm going, this is not a recipe. I'm experimenting. I want to see just how much of an effect we can have on our smoke ring development utilizing or manipulating uh, celery seeds. So I'll show you what we're going to do here. I have three, this is top round, three slices of top round, all close to the same size, but you know, the thickness is uh, pretty well spot on here. We're going to do this three ways. So the first way is just simply going to be seasoned with salt and pepper, nothing else. Just kosher salt and pepper. And I went with top round just simply, A, it's, it's not an expensive cut, so I can play around with it like this. And B, it's very, very lean red meat. And one of the properties you need in order to get a good smoke ring is, is a good healthy dose of myoglobin, which is what red meat has. And I am going to post a couple links to some very interesting articles on, on smoke rings down below in the description box if you want to read it's, uh, some good, good info. I will be tasting this, although again, this is not a recipe because I'm, I'm going pretty heavy with the celery seed here and I want to see if it ruins the flavor profile at all. Okay, then just ground pepper. And this meat's are pretty sticky, so I opted for no binder, and I wanted to keep the flavors, other than the salt and pepper, I wanted to keep it all consistent, pretty neutral. So this is no celery seed or anything on there, and I'm not going to mark this. The other two you'll see that I will be marking. Okay, here's test meat number two. And what I'm going to do prior to applying the salt and pepper is I'm going to apply some ground celery seed. I just ground this, so it's not celery salt. This is just ground celery seed. And I put this in a uh, coffee grinder and ground it up and I'm going to apply a little of this and kind of rub it in. So this is what you'll find in a lot of the rubs nowadays. And again, I have no problem with this being added. It's 100% natural. And if we can figure out ways to make our food look better, then that's, that's good, right? There's a lot of guys that use that, you know, pink curing salt to get a faux smoke ring, and I'm not really on board with that. This at least has, you know, some good flavor. It smells really good. Okay, now we'll add some kosher salt. Some black pepper. And I'll be marking this with one single toothpick. Okay, the third one. So what I have here is basically tea. What I did was I brewed about a tablespoon or so of celery seed in water. I brought the water up to a nice furious boil, turned it off and let it steep for a few hours. And I ended up, it smells like celery with a celery tea. And my whole house smells like celery too. And I'm just going to brush this on. So we'll go with the salt. black pepper and I will be marking this with two toothpicks so this is the celery tea so what I'm going to do now is just allow these to set like I would with any meat that I've applied a rub to and in the meantime I'm going to get that pit barrel cooker rolling we're going to smoke these in the pit barrel so see you guys when I'm ready Pit barrel's ready. I'm going to throw in one chunk of hickory and one chunk of pecan. 
On this cook, we're using the grate. We will not be hanging the, the meat. First place that piece of meat with no seasoning on it. Piece of meat with the celery powder and with the celery tea. So remember, whenever you're using the grate and you're doing a low and slow, you still need to use the rebar because they are part of the air control system here on the pit barrel. So what I'm going to do now is simply monitor temps. I will be placing probes in the meat. I will cook these until they hit an internal temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I figure by then the smoke ring is going to be fully developed. Other than that, I'll take a peek every once in a while. If they look like they're getting dry, I'll spritz them with a little bit of, a little bit of water. Just again, it's a benign flavor. It's not going to affect anything. Um, other than that, see what happens. We're a little over two hours into the cook now. Everything's going well. It smells really good out here. I mean, it kind of has that Santa Maria smell. If you've ever been to a really good Santa Maria cook, this is what the air smells like right now. It smells really good. Um, we're right around 170, so we're getting close. And there's what we look like. I did a little shuffling. I switched places with these two pieces. Uh, you can see they're nice and moist. Pit barrel cooker. Uh, I have not had to spray these things one time. So, doing really well. A little, little bark starting to develop. I don't know. Um, uh, right now, I'm still leaning towards pulling at 180. I may, just for the heck of it, let the bark develop a little more. But again, this isn't a recipe. I just want to see, I just want to see the smoke rings. See you guys in a bit. We're at three hours now, and I'm calling them done. <laughs> They're all in the same ballpark, a little over 180, as far as the temp is concerned. Um, smells amazing, and, and I think they look really good. It's got a really beautiful color. Um, Part of me wants to keep them rolling just to see how tender they'll get, you know, to see if I can get them as tender as a really well-cooked brisket. But, again, this is not a recipe. I'm not showing you guys how I cook top round. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Again, it's an experiment on that celery seed and smoke rings. So I'm going to keep it at that. I'm not going to get distracted. That being said, I'm really looking forward to making some nice thin slices of this and trying it out. I'm picturing a sandwich in my very near future. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these off the pit. I'm going to get them inside and just let them rest a little bit. And then we'll slice them open and we'll compare. Again, I still have all the toothpicks in here so I know which is which. I'll see you guys in, a, uh, I don't know, probably 15 minutes or so. So I gave these a good 15 minutes rest and they're smelling amazing. But like I said before, I'm more excited about seeing what kind of smoke rings we have rather than the flavors. So again, this piece right here is just the salt and pepper, no celery seed. This is the dried powdered celery seed, salt and pepper. And then this is that celery seed tea it's slathered on before the salt and pepper. So. For some reason, I'm nervous right now. Okay, first the one with just the salt and pepper. You see we do have a nice, nice smoke ring there. Okay, here's the one with the celery powder, that ground celery seed powder. And then here's the one that I'm most excited to see with that celery seed tea. So there is a slight difference between the piece of meat without any celery on it all and the one with the celery seed powder. But I hope it comes up on camera. I'm going to try to show this. Uh, the, the piece of meat that I put that, again, that tea on, it's a lot darker. It's, it's not any wider, but it's very, very dark. And I probably could have got it wider if I would have went a little bit longer. But let me, this one right here where my finger's tapping is the one with the tea. And this is the one with just the, the celery powder. Tea? Powder. Let me get that uh, one with nothing on it again. So again, celery tea? <laughs> nothing. You can see it's just darker. It's a, it's a little darker. Let me try these things here. Just curious at how pronounced the, the celery flavor is. 
personally try it without anything. And again, we're not cooking brisket here, but that's what the slice looks like. And it's definitely, you know, I expect it. It's tougher than a brisket right now. Again, I don't, I haven't cooked it till it gave up the ghost, so to speak. Yeah, it just, I mean, it just tastes like a good slice of roast beef. It's what it tastes like. Here's the one with the celery powder. I'm definitely picking up the celery powder, but it's not overpowering. It's, it's a good, it's a good flavor. Here's that one, that celery tea. It's good. So I think overall, as far as flavor is concerned, my favorite is the, the piece that I use that celery powder on. I, the, the salt and pepper's there, I mean, as you would expect, and it's just a slight little hint that your tongue picks up, that celery powder, and it's a good enhancing flavor. I like it. Um, I think this did a better job of darkening the, the smoke ring, but there's definitely not, I, I wasn't picking up any celery flavor on that. I don't know if that's good or bad. And just the salt and pepper, I mean, it was just, you know, a good piece of roast beef. <laughs> yeah, thinly sliced sandwiches, here I come. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's something different, something out of the box for me, but it was fun, something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. See you on the next video, guys. Cheers.